Yeah. No, it was um, Sebastian from Little Mermaid. Just like, keys to Keys to go. Wow, Keys-tigo. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd On. Hey everyone, welcome to Nerd On, the podcast you didn't need, but you deserve. It is Valentine's Day week. Yeah. Let's say. Yeah, we can say Less than a week. Love is in the air. Love is in the air. Smell that. uh, It's February. It's February. February. It's actually my favorite month. So. Oh, really? Is it? Yeah. Why? It's birthday. Lots of reasons. It's your birthday, birthday month? Birthday. It's yeah. birth. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's your birthday, birthday month. Feb- mm-hmm. Nice. February. Whenever it comes. February. February. Uh, so we thought it would be, be appropriate to talk a little bit about our fictional romances like yeah. that we've observed. Movies, TVs, movies, TV video shows. games, books, comic books, radio shows. we fell in love with. Radio shows. Stories specifically. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to try. Talkies, silent films, cartoons. <laughs> wow, I don't know way back. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Actually, I do have kind of answers for those. All anyway, right. Yeah. I want to hear those. I'm going to hold you um, to that. Because, you know, you can have space battles. You can have, you know, yeah. you know, guard Helm's Deep. But at the end of the day. You got to force a kiss in there between Rose and Finn. You gotta, you're doing <laughs> it for some <laughs> shit. <laughs> My God. Is that how you feel? What, oh, whoops. <laughs> Oopie. You said that out loud. I did. Doesn't so, it feel like almost like they didn't tell him it was going to happen on screen? I think so. You got caught off guard. Is it, what, what? I think Ryan Johnson was Ryan like, Johnson's just like, I'm just cinematic just, genius. Just do it. Just kiss him. Just kiss him. him. No, it was um, Sebastian from Little Mermaid. Just like, keys to go. Keys to go. Wow, keys. wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. So she was hallucinating because of her injury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh... Maybe uh, a quick introduction. Yeah, let's, yeah. Go, let's yeah. talk yeah. a couple of really, really quick. Real quick. Uh, Ali, I'm one of your hosts. Yeah, I'm Josh. I'm a romantic. Uh, Tom, Tom, I'm a hopeless romantic. Yeah, that's mm. you are pretty hopeless. And Corey, I'm a Roman. Cool, that works. <laughs> <laughs> your options are open. So, uh, yeah, or I'm a Roman I mean, tick. Thoughts. Memories about it specifically with about us? Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day Valentine's specifically. Ooh. Oh, okay. For me, I mean, just the idea of it, like. That's how I won my wife over in in high school. I feel like America, maybe in California specifically, because that's the only state I've lived in. um, I feel like there's a a a, a slight bit of cynicism around Valentine's Day, where Mm -hmm. like all the like single people are kind of like, oh, Single Awareness Day and Single Day Aware. Single. Well, there's a lot of the people who are like, well, it's just it's a holiday made by Hallmark. Yeah, and and it's a commercial company. Blah blah. blah. But I feel like you know. with it's an excuse not saying to it's drink not. wine and eat chocolate and, and go to expensive restaurants. Yeah, like I'm I mean, not upset about someone going, hey, you, show someone how much you like them. Yeah. One day out of the year. Like, oh, I didn't want to. I guess yeah. I got to. I, I remember, like, as a kid, That's like, great. I was forced to fill out these little cards of, like, to, Tom, to like, whoever from Tom. And I was just like, why am I, I doing choo, this? I choo, choose you. And it's the, much <laughs> better than someone being like, happy stab day. Go out and stab the people you love. It's much oh, better it's, than that. That's a Hallmark holiday. Don't listen to him. It's, well, is there a thing like that? I know the Valentine's Day there movie. Could be. Valent- <laughs> there was a Valentine's there- Day killer movie yeah. with David Boreanaz, the guy from <laughs> Bones, where he's a murder man. So who is uh, also Angel yeah. in Buffy? He's also who is a romantic interest of Buffy, and he's also kind of. in Bones, where he's the romantic interest of the other Dacian <laughs> 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 uh, So personal memories of I fun fact think- about me. Oh yeah. Ooh. Um, and don't feel sad or anything about this because it's whatever. Uh, I don't like how you preface <laughs> I've, that. I've been, in, <laughs> I've been in many relationships in my in my days. Yeah. Um, but none that have been a year long. Okay. Or up to up to a year year long. I have never ha- been in a relationship on Valentine's Day. Ah. It has gone. Uh, it, I've had. Wow. I've had them start like in March and go to like. January. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. It's like oh, it's about that time we're about to end it. Yeah. Well, in a similar sense, so me, I grew up with like a really close knit of friends back home, and we kind of have like I think we kind of like cursed each other where we would never all be in a relationship at the same time, and it was kind of like oh it's his turn he's he's got to be in a relationship. But there's one, one Did friend that actually was, work that actually happened when none of us were all in a, none of us were ever in a relationship at the same time. Okay. We all had relationships at separate times in our wow. lives. Where it's like, well, he's dating that girl, so he's got to be doing his own thing, but. One of my close friends, James, shout out to James. Um, we always wanted and always tried to have this double date on Valentine's Day ever since we were like 11 years old. It just never happened. And it's just like, once that happens, the world will explode. 
Like, cause then the stars would have aligned and finally it's like, we can actually go on a double date. It'd be fucking nice. Yeah. We treat our, but you guys are going to be in your thirties when that happens. Yeah. It'll be our second wives too. Yeah. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, I was, uh, broken up with once on Valentine's Mm. day. Mm. Wow. Good timing. But it was elementary school, so it doesn't really count. Well, I mean, that's like first heartbreak. Yeah. I was going to say, I've been broken up with a week before Valentine's Day. It's like the chalk hearts that break. It's one of those. It's like, it's a heartbreak with small heartbreak. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Those anise and hearts thing. <laughs> and it's like you are too cute. Those Here's ones. the tums. Yeah. Oh. Um, mine. I love Valentine's Day. So Valentine's some, Day or Halloween? Go to your head. Oh, Hall- Halloween, 100. percent But I guess you don't love Valentine's Day. I do love Valentine's Day. But you can like <laughs> multiple things. Tom is not black and white like that. Darth Tom. Yeah. Apparently, only, only Sith dealing with this. The um, but uh, so Valentine's Day. I'm I'm a singer songwriter. I'm a writer. I'm I, mm-hmm. like Tom. Hope is romantic. Uh, and at the time, I was 16, and uh, that's I a, had that's years. I had fancied my now wife at that time. We went to high school together. Yeah. And I came Were up with. Were you courting this, her? I was courting, courting her. Uh, I had written her a song already. Oh, that dang. kind of thing. So Valentine's Day rolls around, and I was like, I got this. All I of us untalented. Oh, no. So I like. I thought this, you know what, looking back on this, this was very, I feel like this is really mature for like a little 16 year old. I went up to her mom and her sister and I was like, look, I'm going to marry her. I got plans <laughs> to like surprise her Valentine's Day morning before school and like got my mom, got everyone involved in this except for her. And so what I did is I made these, I got gifts and I made signs that were like, corresponding with them, right? So the first one was like a teddy bear. And the oh. sign was like, you know, this may be cuddly, blah, blah, blah. But the next thing is this. And it was like a hint to what the next thing was. And it was flowers. And I was like, these may smell nice, but this may da, 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 da. And the next thing was whatever. Did you just PS I love you? Her? And then around the corner. <laughs> so she had this walkway down her house. And these were all the way down the walkway. There's a couple turns. So you couldn't really see around the corner what it was. And I was like, this next thing uh, is, uh, you know, will warm you up. And she turns the corner. And the last thing was me with uh, her favorite drink from Starbucks. On the way to school in the caramel morning. frappuccino, caramel macchiato, oh. caramel or caramel, whatever. <laughs> uh, so like, to the, I I peaked a hundred percent peaked. I've never had it. anything that good again. No, you remember? But hmm. uh, I still I'm gonna hold that up. Maybe uh, next week you're gonna have to do something uh, a little better. Yeah, yeah we'll see. he'll zip up his red hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two caramel macchiatos. <laughs> Dang. She's going to be so, jacked out of her mind on that caffeine. Was, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was my big thing. And the funny thing is she told me on the other side of it that her mom and her sister were like, all right, we're going to go a little early today. And she was like, no, I don't want to. Why are you telling me to do things? They're like, can you go out to the car and get something? And she's like, you go get it. And I'm out there waiting with coffee and they know uh, I'm out there. Uh. <laughs> it worked out. Nice. So going back to like I guess Throwback Thursday, you know, yeah. being it at all. What is like our first love story that we ever like really felt a big thing? Any for? specific uh, medium? No. Oh, okay. I mean, so anything like, that like that touched your I was Corey book, would say comic your heart soul, heart souls. Um, yeah. Anything that like made you feel like you know what, what? you got Tom. I'm not just a boy. I am <laughs> a man that will. Find love. I am more than this flesh that binds me. (laughs) I understand. You're just a boy standing in front of a girl. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Tom, why don't you start since you posed the question? Shit. Um, I don't know. I I I grew up around a lot of like lovey dovey shit. I I don't want to sound real. Make this really sad or anything like that. But since my parents, it's cool. It's you. So (laughs) since my parents got divorced at a really young age, like my mom was a really big sap for like a lot of like romance movies, and so Mm -hmm. that really got me into it. And, I mean, I think the first, I think we talked about this sometime, I don't know, but the first movie. Must have been your other podcast. Might have been. The first movie I saw. (laughs) (laughs) um, The first movie I saw my mom, like, cry because of the story was, like, The Notebook. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, like, sweeping the nation. And so, for me, I was kind of like, like, as a boy who's becoming, like, a teenager, it was kind of like. Oh, like girls, you just want to like, you know, like run away or cooties. Or it's like, yeah, this girl likes me. I don't like her. And then all of a sudden, a notebook came. I was like, oh, you can be more and have partnership and, you know, love each other, like, with, you know, all that shit. And what do you want? Yeah. And, and chase after each other for years. What do you and years. Want? God damn it. What do you want? And there'd be this that. long saga of shit Wait, that could happen. Hold on. Time out. Time TD. Time, what, what did you just say? I never saw it. Get out. Okay, we're going to stop recording. Right now. We're going to go watch the notebook. Anyone else who hasn't watched it, 
pause this. I know it's <laughs> is that you our own pause it. this? You own this? it. Go to you your ex it. girlfriend or boyfriend's house. Go get oh, it. Watch the notebook. <laughs> the watch worst. the notebook. Come back. Press play. We'll resume right here. And after that, play some Drake. And then you. Yeah. <laughs> or John Mayer's continuum. John, uh, oh. For me, it was Jack Johnson. Uh, That's fair. Oh yeah. Um, Jason Mraz. So yeah, okay. it was it was a notebook. And that was the movie that made me fall in love with Rachel McAdams. Um, <coughs> okay. I saw I saw Mean Girls and I was like, ah, whatever. But after that, I was like, oh. See, that's how I know I'm actually love- in love with her. Because I saw Mean Girls and I was like, who this? Who Wait, this? It wasn't this? Red Eye? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I liked her in Red Eye. All of it. I've seen all of them. But to me, this movie made me actually like love her and care this like girl that doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. She was your girlfriend, but like she didn't you know, like, know about yeah. it. I, like, I cared about her. I mean, obviously I had crushes beforehand, but I was like, so but nothing like Rachel. No. No. Mm. Tom knows how deep my Rachel love goes. Tom, who's my... We all have that celebrity list. Who's my one through ten? Oh, my God. We're going to well, do this? One through ten? I 10? thought your wife is one, and then two through ten is... I said celebrity list. Okay, fine then. Well, I mean, your, but, your wife is kind is of a celebrity. Still, she's a celebrity. Rachel is one through ten. Your wife is kind of celebrity. Oh, <laughs> Rachel is all ten? Shout yeah, out to his wife. She's one through ten. Everyone else is 11, 12, 13. <laughs> wow. That's wow. where Rachel Mac- McAdams stands. After that, because me, mine after is the notebook as well. Mine is The Notebook. Actually, it's Melanie Laurent, then Emily. Oh. Uh, but uh, that movie in high school was like, these are the songs I've been writing and the messages I've been... Like, that was encompassing everything I had ever felt about love was that, that movie. To me, that last line, do you think our love can make miracles? <gasps> I, like, exploded. <laughs> I died. It was just like, they died in each other's arms. Spoilers, but um, it's... Oh, Wait, so, what? It's yeah. so good. They died? It's 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 so good. Weird. That, that's I mean, mine's quick. I don't even have to read everything Tom said about it. Yeah. There was a point no, I think I so I like after I watched that like being younger, then all of a sudden like you know going being being old enough to go with my friends to Walmart and buying whatever I wanted. I bought that shit. I bought that shit and I watched that shit like for like every day for like a month. And I remember like every single time I was like, can I can I watch this without a tear coming up? No, I have to watch. Uh, a tear's gonna come up. And it was finally after like I watched it without a tear showing. I was like, okay. I can move on to something else, but that yeah. movie got me. Hmm. Got me. I mean, I like, loved The Notebook. Yeah. What about you, Ollie? Um, I was going to go way back to, um, like, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it was, like, one of my first was uh, Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. See, I was I was contemplating doing, like, Aladdin, but I think when I was that age, I liked Aladdin for other reasons besides the love story. Right. Can, can that I was, qu- like, my first, yeah, like, monkey. Yeah, can we quantify? What? Can I quantify and like was it the fact that like you fell in love with the love story or is it just some like a love story that you like? I think it worked like as like the core plot of that movie. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like it worked and like for me as a kid to keep my attention because of that. Like yeah, because for me when I watched Beauty and the Beast Stockholm when, when I was young, I, yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I couldn't. It I really couldn't, is. I couldn't appreciate the love story in it when I was a kid. It was oh, to yeah. me, it was a cartoon. Now watching as adult, I'm like, <laughs> so. oh, I watched it for Lumiere, but I, I agree. Now it's, yeah, it's definitely yeah, great. The 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 theme of it, so to speak. Fuck Gaston. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, dick. That guy is a douche. But the beast looks dope. Yeah. yeah. Um, Josh Joshua? Josh and Josh. Is it Ghostbusters? <laughs> What's so funny is when we were thinking when I when we were preparing this episode, I was like. There is Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> mm. but there is no. no Dana. There is only Zool. Most <laughs> romantic line <laughs> ever. Um, I was. It's it's hard because I am such a when I was a kid and into my teens, I was such a hopeless romantic. I was like, I think of um, How I Met Your Mother mm. and like the main characters, Ted Mosby. Ted Mosby. We all like, want to be. We all want to be Barney. We all secretly really want to be Marshall and Lily. But yeah, we all really yeah. are Ted Mosby. Exactly. Yeah, I was totally like, <laughs> just Perfectly hopeless, sad. romantic, just terrible. Like girls, I was a. Can I say this? I was a fat kid. People didn't like me. It's you. I was you can weird. say whatever you want about yourself. <laughs> I was kind of a weird kid. I was quiet before I started doing theater. Anyway, yeah. uh, long boring story. I was thinking Princess Bride. It's mm. a good one. I, as you wish. Yes, that's what I was going to talk about later on for movie ones. Yeah, actually. Well, we'll talk about. It. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Circular, I mean, like circular. the willing to do kind of anything for your person, mm. that loyalty. Um, yeah, I mean, if I can, it's hard because you're like you brought up. Uh, you can't appreciate the love story when you're a kid, but right. I love romantic comedies. Like I, I and that oh, is I mean, too. the romantic. Comedy. <laughs> I, I I would be the I was I am the husband. 
that would be like, yeah, let's go see it. I'm down. Yeah. Or let's go watch. Like, Bonnie will be like, hey, you want to watch Bridget Jones' Diary? Sure, let's do it. You know, stuff like that. The holiday. Love right. Actually. Love I love Actually. actually. What I've been finding out, I've been going to the movies with like Ugh. people lately since I got Movie Pass. <laughs> hashtag Movie Pass. Shout out to Movie Pass. Um, hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> yet. Hashtag yet. Uh, and I'm like, <clears throat> all these romances coming. I was like, I'm going to watch that. I'm going to watch that. I'm gonna, not because I have it, but it's more like, I, I love romance movies. My, my guilty pleasure is serendipity. Mm. Oh, oh yes. my God. John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale, Kate. Kate Beckinsale Kate. is probably my Rachel McAdams, but I'm probably still forgetting about someone. Probably. Oh, I have a whole list. Yeah. And like, it's not a one, like it's, but Kate Beckinsale is definitely in the top 10. I have volumes. <laughs> it's terrible. It's, I'm like, he I does. love her. Just, that's my wife. That's categorized. My wife. That's my wife. He's got base. I days. also have them like, you know, base for days. Base for days. Base for days. <laughs> I love it. Dumbass base that's for days. New name of our podcast. <laughs> base for days. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Bay Day. Bay, well, I base for days. Bay, 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 that's all. Bay, 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 bay. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, when I think about it, I was such a romantic that I just loved him. I, yeah. I, can, I can watch him. And I'm, I, I'm a sap. Yeah. Okay. It, and I think that the cool yeah. thing about that movie specifically, like it, the call to adventure is because of a romance. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great thing. Well, it's that classic, like, yeah. princess well. trapped in a tower. I wasn't sure what we were still love. talking about. I didn't know if we were talking about Bridget Jones' diary or <laughs> I think it's just, Notebook. Just or, romance no, it all movies <laughs> in general, I think. You know, I actually just watched Bridget Jones' diary for the first time. Like, oh, man. Several months ago. Really? It's so good. And I was like, oh, there's a thing. Because there's now like Bridget Jones' diary 2, Bridget Jones' baby. I was like, oh, yeah. so many things. A lot of things. A lot too many. Someone things. call it a franchise. Ah, um, trilogy. But I think I think that's good to kind of like um, go gauge into movies? where we're all at. Yeah, we can head into. We have a few categories we want to yeah. talk about today. We want to talk about specifically like movies, video games, books, uh, uh, TV shows, kind of stuff like that. Bounce some ideas around. See what our favorite um, romances are. Now, movies. That's hard. I think. I think movies I th- is going to be the hardest for me. I, I have a whole list. Maybe okay. Pick top three. One talk. Oh. Top three, okay. top three movie romances. They don't have to be love <sighs> movies, but movie romances. romances. I, can I come right out the gates with one Do that's it. been like? Do it. It is it, out of his eyeballs. If we're talking about in love, passion, romance type things, it is Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> Bella and Edward Twilight. Yes, yes. yes. thank you, okay. Stephanie. Cool. What a good writer she is. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's the Adams family. Uh, Morticia and Gomez. Oh my Gomez. god, it's on my list. Mm. Yep. They are the most in love characters I have ever seen in my entire life. And and it's on Angelica Houston who's like phenomenal in everything yeah. she does in the movies. What but is I the... I remember even as a kid being like, I want love like that someday. Yeah. I want someone to just understand me at the most fundamental level that I could. Cuz they surprise each other even however many years they've been together. Yeah. They still find ways to surprise each other with like super dark shit, but like, you know but what it's I mean? The Adams family, right? So uh, that as soon as we thought of this topic, I was like, movies, boom, Adams family for yeah. sure. Okay. What do you mean? Yeah, no, yeah, no, I agree with. Yeah. That. I think we should just go around the room and just keep mentioning some because there's so many that yeah. it really is going to be. I think movies is probably our biggest topic for yeah. this. Like, it's going to have the most. Yeah. So I also uh, we'll save this towards the end. I have my favorite anti love story as well. Okay, um, is that a movie? We'll, we'll get a movie. there. Okay, we'll do it at the end. My, I have a I have a dark horse, which is um, Batman and Catwoman mm. in, uh, in Wait Returns, Dark Knight Returns, specifically. Wait, Dark Knight Rises? No, Returns. Dark Knight Returns, a comic. Rises. They Dark, don't really, they, I guess they're talking about movies, right? Uh, yeah, I mean you can see it as a movie. It started as a comic. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I see where I'm going with this. Um, that one, that's why it's kind of like a dark horse because it doesn't okay. really fit. But for me, it's um, which also is a book, <laughs> uh, Lord of the Rings, mm, okay. Return of the King, mm. um, with um, Aragorn, Aragorn yeah. and and Arwen, Arwen. or uh, Eowyn. <laughs> There's, they're the exact same names. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's with Arwen, and okay. it was. I, I don't know if this was part of the extended scene. But it was her kind of like realizing his mortality and like having to deal with that fact that mm-hmm. eventually he's gonna die yeah. and stuff, even though he's like lives, he can live for much longer or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He lives uh, to 180 in the book, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Which something crazy. I'm pretty sure is Starts a detail. Starts off the movie at 80 years old. <laughs> it's, a, it's a detail that's left out of the theatrical cut, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's for me, that that romance was 
huge well, threat. In the, the movie, whole... it was well done as well. I mean, that was... Yeah. She has that moment where they're they're leaving mm-hmm. for the uh, Greyhaven, and she stops, and then Brett from Fire the Concords is like, my lady, we need to go. And she's like, nah. She has that vision of the kid running to her That's, and everything. Th- that whole oh. sequence was... <laughs> Beautiful! Yeah. Jajwa? Yeah. Hmm. I, I'm trying to think of where to start. Since we're Anywhere. just going, since we're just going around the list and just listing one at a time, Ron, Hermione, Harry Potter, but that's also a book. Does that See, count? Okay, I have oh, a qualm gosh. with that one. Qualm? Why do you have a qualm? I, Fight. Over while love. I was reading it, I uh-huh. always thought Harry and Hermione. Yeah, right. I never got it. I never bought the Ginny stuff. Oh, I still don't buy the Ginny thing, but I can still I can buy Ron and Hermione. Okay. And the sexual tension between the two, I can get that. Yeah, that Ginny thing, I'm a little... I'm not... Like, I'm it still almost not, felt like a distraction more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. yeah. There was well, a whole lot of substance to it. But I do like... Movies. I like how they portrayed it in the movies. I think uh, Rupert Grint... Does that and, count or is that more of a book thing? Oh, where? I mean, that counts. It's a movie. Yeah. It is a movie, it's but a movie. its source material is... Don't is, matter, none. Did you like how Rupert Grint and Hermione and uh, uh, Emma Watson did it? Yeah. Then, yeah, that okay then that, that's the one you're talking about. There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> Let me justify it for you. Okay, thank you. What about you, Tom? Uh, it's Did you already mention yours? No well, books. it's funny because we're all going like in Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Adam's Family. I was like, do I go with another franchise too? No. But, you can do whatever you want, Tom. Um, I, I, for me, I really. So I've been watching. I've been watching a ro- like a romance movie a lot lately, and it's uh, definitely maybe. It's the same. Oh, okay. I think mm-hmm. Same writers yeah. of Love Actually, um, and it's Ryan Reynolds' 2008 movie with Isla Fisher, Rachel Weisz, and Elizabeth Banks. Mm-hmm. And uh, is it Isla or is it Isla? I, I, Isla. I call it Isla. Isla. Okay. Isla. I think Isla, it's I actually think. Isla. Okay. I don't know. Is if anyone knows her S. that's listening, playing the home game, tell her to let me know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll pronounce. And uh, I'll tell her how to pronounce my first name. It's crazy. No one will ever know. Tom. The other, <laughs> the other one. Uh, and it's a movie about pretty much. It's how I met your mother. How I met your mother. The movie. Pretty much a guy's telling his daughter uh, after he gets his divorce papers. How him and his mother met, or how him and a her, his daughter's mother met his yeah, wife, yeah. his ex wife, and it goes through the like the nineties, and uh, pretty much has him like wanting to be president, then working for the Clinton campaign, and then how he finds love and is introduced to three women, and they're all in different parts of his life, and how throughout the years he'll uh, run into these women and you know explore love in their facets with them. But also, like, it challenges him of like, what is it to me a man, and what is it to be in love, and everything. So it's it's one of my favorite ro- like romances I've ever had. But Makes I you guess think. answering the question of fictional romances, I'd say Batman. But then I'm going with Batman Returns, Michael Keaton, Michelle Michael Pfeiffer. Michael Keaton, Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm, nice. Miss because Pfeiffer. the main thing, I, I just didn't get a lot. I, as much as I wanted Anne Hathaway, I think she was cool as Selena Kyle. I didn't see a lot of between Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was kind of just happened because of happenstance. I felt there was more stuff that happened between Miranda Tate, a.k.a. Talia al Ghul, and Bruce Wayne because she was trying to reignite hope in him, but it was over a false thing. But then in Batman Returns, this Bruce Wayne and Catwoman, it was more like their loneliness created room for each other. And yeah. it was, it was, and, and and even though I hate the fact that he rips off his damn mask, uh, <laughs> oh, and like destroys, it. destroys it, and it's like we're the same, and it's that. And I've always felt like characters that, or romances that kind of come together because two characters understand each other in a way that no one else does. Yeah, I, those are the ones that always it got to me because I always felt like maybe I wasn't fully understood, and so like it's uh-huh. not that like it's not like oh I love you and I covet you and I want to be with you, but it's more like. We just understand where we come from. Yeah. And we're both kind of outsiders in a certain way. So I'm, Yeah. I get I'll that. Yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. I like that. So that's that was me. That was my fictional romance if I could put mm, uh, yeah, for movies. For movies. Uh, okay. Um, are we shying away from obvious ones? No. Like, for movies, right? Yeah. No. I mean there's Jack and Rose, Titanic. I was gonna say like Han and Leia. I I, I, okay. I wanna stay yeah. away from yeah. Han and Leia because we did the Star Wars that's thing. That's fair. But... Okay, I'll stay away from that. Then mine I'll do a, Opposite end of that spectrum, I'll do kind of an obscure one. Um, Anakin and Darth. Oh, Anakin and Obi Wan. Uh, have you ever seen a movie called Beginners? Mm, I have. Uh, uh, it's got Ewan McGregor, Melanie Laurent, and Christopher Plummer. 
Uh, and the love story between Melanie Laurent and uh, Ewan McGregor's character is so well done and well played um, that it's probably in my top five favorite movies of all time. Okay. Um, and fun fact, it's the only movie I ever bought before I watched it. I just saw a trailer and I was like, I know I like this movie. Um, but uh, essentially what the plot line is, is that, and this isn't giving anything away because it's in the trailer and stuff, but Ewan McGregor's mom died and at 70, his dad comes out as uh, gay. Okay, yeah. And yes, I um, hmm. so it kind of kind of plays along his life in that time and the writer of the movie that actually happened. So it's kind of his his story. Um, but it is if you get a chance to check that out, it is so much at love and heartbreak and wonderful. It's just it's amazing. I, I watch it at least twice a year. Ewan McGregor, you saying that reminds me of Big Fish. Yeah. Which yeah. is one of my favorite movies. I, was, um, I thought you were going to say Moulin Rouge. <laughs> or Moulin Rouge. Because that also, is like love on the nth degree. Right yeah. There. That uh, was a good one, too. Um, but yeah, Big Fish, you know, talking about a movie that can make me freaking sob. Weep. For, for, for days is that. For days. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Ollie? <laughs> I watched Big Fish yesterday. <laughs> Mm. That's good. I think we've come to more movie stuff as we keep going. Do yeah, we want to go yeah. into like we can move on? We can go into video games. Or we can go to TV. Best romance. I think whatever jumps out at you at this point. I think this is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind a of a Valentine's free for all. Day episode. Yeah. It's yeah. whatever we want it want it to really be. Something yeah. giving giving you guys something to watch or do while you're yeah. with your. I'll say right now. Um, him, uh, How I Met Your Mother was a big source. Like when, mm-hmm. when How I Met Your Mother came out for me, I was kind of in a bad place in my life, same, and same. there was something about it that gave me hope. Because even though there were often situations that would take the hope away, that would happen to Ted, it just it really hit me. I just really loved it. I loved Barney was like the motto of my life, like because <laughs> I wanted to, like you said, I wanted to be Barney. Uh, have you but met you Josh? Really wanted yeah. to be Marshall and Lily. Have you met Corey? Um, <laughs> but I uh, no, I oftentimes I would say when I feel sad, I stop feeling sad and be awesome instead. There you go. True story. Mm-hmm. But anyway, no, uh, I loved How I Met Your Mother. Like, how I Met Your Mother is probably. I think it's in my top five shows of all time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe even top three shows of all time. We've all watched it, right? Everyone in this room watched everything? I, it just, yeah. it really yeah. hit me, and <laughs> I just loved everything about it. I think the format of that show, like it being something that's like a like a story that's being told, let them like jump between timelines and yeah. stuff. Like, like jump three weeks later. It's like, oh, now it's three weeks later and within the yeah. same episode. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah. The freaking and, goat. Oh, this is not the, the story about the goat. Ah, oh, next one. And then oh, yeah. you wait a whole season. They don't talk about the goat. You're like, God damn it. Yeah. yeah, just going through Ted and his relationships and yeah, wondering which one's going to be the mom and all that stuff. I mean, yes, Marshall was, and Lily. I mean, mm. what killed me, it was in season one with Victoria and mm-hmm. how, like, the moment he finally actually had a connection with her, she had a go. I was like, no! <laughs> that would fucking happen! Um, I mean, I, I like the ending specifically. And the reason why I talk about the ending. Which one? With Rob. Okay. I love that yeah. because the one that I saw, I didn't even know there was another one. There was another one? Yeah. The hell? Oh. I don't want to I don't want to spoil it necessarily. But. Maybe Wait, we'll they, have an episode about it. They did it an alternate ending? Yes. There was one that aired. Mhm. And then there was one that was like online or something like that. Oh, I saw the okay. one that I was remember online. that. that oh. I remember hearing. Okay, about the that. one I'm talking about so is when a, he goes up to Robin's yeah. apartment at the very end. Yes. Is that the alternate? Is that the yes. real? What the fuck? Yes. Oh my god, I didn't watch the real one? No. Oh my god, sorry. Mind blown episode, actually. It's an extended ending. Okay. So we'll move wow. on past it's that. It's an extended. <laughs> we'll I move on past that. <laughs> <laughs> Going back it's to the better. We totally walked okay. over your joke. That's okay. But what did it what do you say? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> no, it's missed. It's missed. It's, it's gone. gone. Oh, it's gone. It's gone the in joke the wind. It's gone. If you want to hear it, rewind the podcast. Um, oh, okay. Going to with other TV stuff, I guess. Uh yeah. Boy Meets World. Yeah, no, Boys yeah. World, Topanga. That's Topanga. like if you're talking classic. And Corey. Topanga and Corey. I fucking uh, hate you, Corey. You get Topanga. I do. <laughs> I do. Topanga. I she's number 11. I actually got asked best. that a lot growing up. How's Topanga? Really? Yeah, a lot. Mm-hmm. That or how's your cousin Austin? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> so other thing um, but no, uh, Boy Meets World was, so a lot of, I feel like, the, right, the generation right before me was all like Saved by the Bell. And then my generation was Boy Meets World. Yeah. And so for me, like, Boy Meets World, I feel like 
taught me kind of a little bit of like the rubric of like friendship, love, all the bullshit that happens between you and school and your formative years, like your friends getting dumb shit, breakups happen all the time, you meet new people, you you do dumb shit, Mm -hmm. your relationship like either forgives you or it doesn't, things take a long time, your brother turns into an idiot after a while, because before he was like the smart, good looking, wisdom filled brother, then all of a sudden he became the idiot. Actually, fun fact about that is that in in the later episodes, they stopped writing Sean and Eric together because those two actors would laugh through all the scenes because they enjoyed their each other's company so much that they stopped Wilfred writing Will and uh, Ryder uh-huh. Strong? Yeah, stopped writing them together. <laughs> nice. Oh, That's funny. Um, I love Wilfred L, by the way. He's Batman. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Corey and Topanga, I feel like... Ever know. since the moment she drew lipstick all over her face... I it, knew. It's funny because <laughs> in that show, like the the younger years, like you see him hate Topanga, and then after that, immediately when they were in high school, mm-hmm. and it's all about Corey loving Topanga, and it's like, well, didn't you hate her? It's like, well, those were the dark years. Yeah, he calls it yeah. the dark years when he quote unquote uh, pretended to not have feelings for her because they do flashbacks before uh, in an age before that time, and they were like super in love, and then when they went to like well cooties, dude, yeah, cooties, nobody cooties. wants cooties. Come on. Nobody so wants cooties. I thought that was pretty cool, and then. And I remember rewatching. And I was like, "Dude, they broke up so many goddamn times." Yeah. And for me, like, I, growing up, I've just had this vision of like them just being together forever. But I was like, "No, they broke up a fucking lot." Yeah. And so, because yeah. um, I I loved that show, but I don't think I was old enough or uh, emotionally mature enough to really get deep into the Corey and Topanga romance. What? Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, it was fun. It was a cool show that I watched a lot. I Did loved my that romantic show very much. flower bloom before yours? Possibly, ah. it's possible. <laughs> but also, I'm younger than you. So. But it it was, I think I was in that weird in between age when that was mm. going on. Okay. Um, but my, the first one that affected me, that I remember like watching and tearing up and crying was Pam and Jim from The Office. Oh. For me. Hmm. Um, that be- well, I think it was because I was in a, more of a similar situation than Corey and Topanga. Corey and Topanga were together and departed together, and departed, like wanted to be together. But when they were together, it was very in love. And I was in a similar situation when The Office came out, where I had this girl uh, who I really had feelings for, but I couldn't say from anything. From afar, you had I a love from afar. I couldn't say anything. So when that, you know, I mean, th- I could say, "Girl, it was my wife." I couldn't really like. I was afraid of losing the friendship and stuff like that. So I never really ah, spoke the old, up. Shall we stay friends or not? Yeah, and so <laughs> take it further. So that episode where Jim <laughs> tells her she's about to get married, like in a week, and he just like says it, I cried like a baby. I was like, <laughs> I gotta say it too. Um, so that that whole romance really affected me in a, in a very that's never worked out for me. I just want to say what <laughs> holding in feelings and then being like, hey, BT Dub. I really like you, and yeah, no, no, no. It, it uh, I mean, it worked out yeah. in my case, I guess. Yeah. But um, <laughs> been there. Uh, that was that was the one that I remember going like, "Oh shit, I really relate to this story." Yeah, mm-hmm. that was my TV mm-hmm. one. Your TV one. Um, speaking of crying, like a little baby, <laughs> <laughs> which I've done of, on multiple occasions to fictional characters. Uh, six feet under. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> you say, oh, I'm, I'm giving it to you. I'm transitioning you are? it to you. I'm handing it over. Why don't so, you guys have a discussion about segui. it? It's open. Segui. Uh, segui. Segui. I was um, going to say David and Keith. David and Keith? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say from Six Feet Under. But yeah, that works too. What were you going to say? I was say? thinking of Nate and oh yeah, the other chick. Yeah. Don't remember Nate. Because that was just a fascinating uh, Nate thing and to. The other chick. The other chick. It's been years. <laughs> it's been, it has been years. It's been like seven years since I've seen that show. Um, but Such it was a like, good show. Yeah. So good. But it was um, there. It was just a fascinating relationship to see unfold and like come back together together yeah. again and all that stuff. So it was quite rocky. Yeah, yeah. It is a one of the best show. endings to a series. It is. Yes, yeah. it I, is. I, I feel I have two more actually, but oh, we're not done. Just know, keep going. Okay. Just, well, for me, so it was funny. I forget who who just said like when I think of love. Oh, it was Adam family. He's like when I think of love, I wanted to be like this. Again, you're gonna get a little bit more about Grumpy Tom, and it's a little controversial. I'm gonna bring this up, but. House of Cards. Okay. So go, fucking go, the go Underwood on. love shit. Like, although they've done yeah. some fucked up shit to each other, but I feel like if there's one, I feel like to me, this is the couple that's like literally more than the sum of their parts. Because like one, they're both ambitious hmm. as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're always keeping on each other's like toes of like making each other like become the best that they are. 
Yeah. And they're, they're, they're the, to me, the rubric of the power couple. Yeah. Like you yeah. cross them, you did. Mm-hmm. Like one will get you. <laughs> one will get you if not the other one. Yep. And without each other, they would never have reached the heights they reached. And for me, I started watching that show when I, in a place where I was really trying to like figure out what I wanted to do with my life and like where I needed to be. And I watched that. And like, for me, like my concept or experiences of love have, have constantly grown and changed and been challenged. And for me, this was a part that solidified that like whoever I end up being my second wife, whatever, um, she will be like a partner, someone that like helps me be, be you know, like become stronger than who I am mm-hmm. and challenges me. Hopefully not do the terrible things that they've done to each other, but um, <laughs> someone who could almost match me in terms of like mental prowess. Yeah. Um, and then my... That's what you hope for. Huh? That's what you hope for. Yeah. Uh, and then my second or my third one for TV was Buffy. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Um, so for me, like the angel love was always going like this is the 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 first love, the true love, mm-hmm. and then there became there was but you that like s- the one with Spike. Well, then there was the stupid agent dude, whatever the uh, hell is uh, Riley. God, I think it was Riley or I something. I remember right. Uh, who right. fights Adam, that weird Frankenstein mm-hmm. robot dude? Um, that was like whatever the college love, but then the Spike thing I like because it was like a slow burn that happened throughout. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was like obviously there was like an attraction level that he had for her. But she was always kind of like pushing it away, and then there's mm-hmm. fucking poor ass Xander on the side who's poor just guy. like, "I love everybody, but I don't know." Yeah. And it's always been Buffy and shit. But that's a really good impression of Xander. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good, <I> think. <laughs> uh, what's t- Tara? Tara. Tara. Yeah. Tara and Willow. And Willow. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big Oof. one. I uh, and so I mean I started watching Buffy because my sister loved it, and I had to record episodes for her while she was like at practice mm-hmm. and so i would watch out all the entire series and it was funny because i remember the episode where tara got shot spoilers spoilers and i was just like damn you're not gonna want to watch this it's, <laughs> it's too sad that show i mean too like, sad i'll give him credit where credit's due like that show yeah just a couple Whedon. moments like that and we won't spoil the second one but shout out to for Josh those Whedon. who haven't seen it but um, I got another. I mean, it's TV now was a movie, Wet Hot American Summer. Mm. Oh, um, <laughs> this is gonna sound silly, but it was such. I've had this conversation a few times. The Ben and McKinley romance. Yeah. Uh, Bradley Cooper and Mike Liam Black's characters, um, for such a over the top comedy. Like yeah. that's that's the the humor it is. Is everything's very big and kind of over the. My top. wife and I call it dumb, where it's just like it's I, just so dumb. It's but awesome. But it's so good. It's um, so funny. They treat they treat that relationship really sincerely. Yeah. And I think it's the only way it works within the context of that movie. Um, but they they carry that over into the TV shows as well. I don't know if you saw the first day of camp, but they have these like really mm-hmm. cute moments together where they did this dance and they're in spandex and this is supposed to be before they they become a couple. And he's like, they just look at each other and he's like, what? And he's like, nothing. What? What? <laughs> Nothing. What? What do you want? Um, so just my hats off to to the Stella crew who who wrote and mm-hmm. directed those movies. Um, I think they possibly did one of uh, the first scenes I had ever seen really tactfully done for for a, a gay romance in a film that's supposed to be over the top comedy. So mm-hmm. I thought it was handled very well. Um, it's yeah. probably one of my favorites too. Probably one of my favorite storylines throughout the entire series that carries into the TV shows also. Nice. So, shout out to that. Yeah. I have two more. Oh, we, we all have a bunch. Show, I keep going. I'm I like, oh, I have two. We, list, have a, we got a list. I still have my anti love story. Like, okay, okay. Let's so, do I'm, it. A, I'm a gush real quick. CW. CW is for teens and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. I, I eat it up. I eat it up. I watched Degrassi when I was a kid. I eat that shit That's up okay. for breakfast. Before you go, don't spoil season five. Okay, okay. no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just going to say, I was going to say Arrow. I'm going to say Elicity. Team Elicity all day. That's uh, Oliver Queen and Felicity Smoke, mm-hmm. um, which they re- retconned the Felicity Smoke character <sighs> for the show. But bless ever my, since then, bless my heart. I love them. But the funny thing is, when I started watching the show, uh, Katie Cassidy, who plays Laurel, uh, uh, Laurel Lance, I uh, fell in love with her. Her as uh, a brunette, I fell in love with her, and I was just like, because that's the OTP <laughs> on in comic books. Like that's. It's uh, Black Canary and and Green Arrow. That's that's it. And then all of a sudden, the TV show, it's like, but I really like Felicity with Oliver. <laughs> like, I'm not supposed to like. It's like as if we watched a movie and like Superman doesn't fall in love with Lois Lane. You're like, but I'm not supposed to like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, and I uh, it's it's it, I love that. And then my second 
CW. We'll, we'll talk about this. But talk um, about Errol Lamar. Uh, well, I I have issues with Elicity. With no, with uh, Laurel. Okay. Laurel. I have I have I have with many issues with that. But well, I don't like the way that they did with their character either. But and the canaries, like it just no, no, no yeah. I, we'll there's a lot of problems in there. Oh yeah, I, I think her characters <laughs> they just that. they just kind of shit on her when they realize that Felicity. This was became like the CW cow. episode. <laughs> but hold on, it's gonna happen. I got Corey's, nothing to say about these. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm about to be done with the CW one, and I don't not think a, anyone else could talk to me with it. Uh, I'm a shout out to all all the fangirls out there with uh, that Vampire Diaries. Oh yeah, Tom's oh. a huge fan. Uh, really, team team Delena, team Damon and Elena. So the premise of the show is pretty much like Twilight. Way I'm more, crack. way more teen angsty shit. Um, more? Yeah. How? Because uh, Twilight was pretty angsty. A girl it wasn't angsty enough. Yeah. A girl named Elena moves into a town, Mystic Falls. And, you know what Twilight needs? More moods. Yes. And <laughs> there's there's two brothers, uh, two two vampire brothers who fucking fall in love with her. She's with Stefan for most of it, and then later on goes with Damon, and it's like, who's the real true love and shit like that? But Team Damon, Damon all the way. All right. He's the boss. And okay. I love now him. I know. So okay. Just let you know. If you yeah, watch it, thank me later. Hmm. I did. Will I? <laughs> you know me, Tom. If I watch it, will I thank you? You have to be, or will I stop you have to watching be open. it? You have to be really, really single. <laughs> what about <laughs> <laughs> I am the opposite of this thing. Single AF. So <laughs> on the realm of going down the um, spectrum, black hole that is vampire <laughs> stuff. I mean, you do have, I mean, yeah, Twilight. I dated a girl that really liked Twilight. I watched all the movies for a girl. Yeah, I, I watched. And I fell asleep in a theater once watching one. Thankfully, I've never attempted to, nor will I ever attempt to watch a movie. <laughs> it brings up. I, I'm. I want to. When we talk, I want to talk about at one point kind of the change of the love story over time mm -hmm. in media. But we'll I was gonna say uh, True Blood. Mm, True Blood. There, there's True Blood. there's some romance going on in Lots. there. Lots um, of romance. I think we would obviously have a lot of angry and amiss fans if we didn't mention Friends. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. There's, of course, there's the Rochester and Rachel, but I am a fan of the Chandler and Monica re relationship. Yeah, I me think too. you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, my wife and I rewatch the series like every other year, just because mm -hmm. it's a nice thing. Well, not like I've never seen it. That's okay. I've only seen a couple of episodes. You would dig it. You would really like it. In my hand. Um, Tom can't <laughs> hold your hand because now he's watched I'm, the majority I'm, of it. I'm, yeah, I'm oh. Uh, <laughs> take it back. I, take... <laughs> I get um, literally shamed for not watching it. Yeah, in our household. So so um, if I come over... Shame. Shame. Okay. Shame. Get naked. Um, shame. But shame. I, I won't spoil it too much for you, but I think it's a more, more genuine and, and playful relationship. The Ross and Rachel one is obviously great. Right. And romantic and has probably some of the best writing in the show mm -hmm. but there's something that i enjoy watching more about about there yeah. and maybe that's because i'm older i think if i was like in my teens i'd be all ross and rachel all day but now that i'm older i'm like that's what i want yeah <laughs> that seems so much easier to me to me how i met your mother uh takes the cake as far as quality of like love story telling i guess yeah. it did like friends never allowed it. like i'm a huge fan of friends like, yeah i've watched the series multiple times but it never but lets itself joey and phoebe why not Joey Phoebe? It's like it would be too much, I think, at that point. It'd be perfect. Because it'd be Degrassi. It'd Everyone be just too, up to it'd be each too other. like perfect. Yeah. It would have been know? too yeah. perfect. Yeah. It would have worked too well. That's yeah, what it would have been too much. <laughs> but it never lets itself get super, super deep. Mm -hmm. Where like how I met your mother does not shy away from that. Yeah. Which yeah. I love. Yeah, I love that about it. Yeah. Jin and Son from Lost. Yeah. Mm. I just oh, was thinking yeah. about TV shows. Oh, or I mean man. Lost. We're talking uh, he started off with Kate such Sawyer. A dick. Kate and Sawyer, no, uh Saeed and Oh, his chick. Oh, yeah. That was good. What's was the out good. of breath guy? Jack. <laughs> out of breath guy. Jack, always Jack. out of breath. Always out of breath. <sighs> Even we when he's sitting on the couch. Kate. <laughs> or Dolores and Teddy from Westworld. Yeah. Their paths yeah. will always. Uh, I, I, you know what? Talking about Jin, uh, I loved his character. I also yeah. love that guy, that actor specifically. He's mm -hmm. on Hawaii Five-0 now. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Steve's. Uh <laughs> But he's he's also a voice actor. I don't know if you've ever played uh, um, Saints Row. Yeah. But he's Johnny Gat. Oh, in wow. Saints Row. Yeah. Interesting. So I thought that was a fun fact. I mean, should Saints we... Row, which is a video game. Video game. Should we talk about, some video, talk about some video games? Yeah, yeah we uh, could. I still have some. Okay. We can I mean, go back and forth. I mean, there's still going to be movies and stuff like that we're going to pop it back into. Just, I mean, it's just, like, it's how like do we do this? Just preface like, it. This movie, this game, this whatever. I mean, we don't okay. have to do great it. romance. Less guidelines. We're just it's talking an airline about terminal. Like, group C can come in, but B and A can still go. Like, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> we're introducing the new. I way. like that. That's real good. 
uh, uh, video, video games. games. I mean, I don't want to take. I feel like yours. Master Chief and Cortana. <laughs> is that a thing? Do they really like each other? I thought it was more of like it's just a partnership thing. I think I think not in the in this respect. Like I want to have a romance with this AI and fall in love. But like they did, like they, Theodore and Samantha they were both and her. kind of they were both kind of outsiders. They were both like considered older models in a sense because yeah. Chief is a older version of the Spartans, and they had been through so much together. I think there was some sort of love there that, for yeah. me, I cried. I don't care. <laughs> I don't As even a care. single tear rolls down his cheek. Yeah. There Cloud. was definitely a connection. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cloud and Ares, or Eris, however Aerith. you want to. Eris. <laughs> what about Cloud Seth and Aerith? Aerith. Seth and Uh In Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. I can go um, with that. I'll one-up you. I think, um, I think uh, what is it? Squall and Renoa. Oh, wow. Is it slightly better? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Story? Why? Um, I just <laughs> Why? like it because Why? you... Why? Because they're both. <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> you just kind of watch it naturally happen over the course of the game. Yeah. And it, and it kind of builds and builds. And then it kind of crescendos in a, in a way. And I think it's 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 very obviously a romance story more than anything else, really. Yeah. I mean, they're on the, they're like, you know, the, the traditional Final Fantasy logo thing that whatever's behind the text, mm-hmm. like they're behind the text and embrace. Yeah, as opposed to like a meteor in FF7. <laughs> yeah. And then but there's Last of Us. Last yeah. of Us, of course. Mm. That's a different kind of that's story, different. though. Very different. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> that's a mother dot. That's a father daughter relationship. Or is Corey. it? No. What <laughs> is wrong with you? I've what never played the game. Don't bother recording this. <laughs> uh, you get us in trouble. Uh, For me, so uh, I, I I put a, I put a mention for Dante's Inferno. I'm not talking about the book. I'm talking about the game. Santa yeah. Monica Studios, which plays very much like God of War. Yeah. Um. The the entire game's premise is that you're this evangelist crusader You're a Templar Templar who's coming out of the war and you've committed all this sin and atrocities and the archbishop absolved you of all your sins but then when you get home to uh, see your wife she's kidnapped from the devil uh, kidnapped by the devil and brings her to hell and you literally go through mm-hmm. the seven circles of hell to get her back right and so I'll, I remember seeing the trailer for that. It's uh, Al Green's uh, There Ain't No Sunshine. It's a great game. <laughs> yeah. And it's a f- the ent- phenomenal. The game. entire time you're like fight facing all your sins. Doesn't and stuff he like that. stitch his. Stitch a cross. He stitches a cross into his skin. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, the, the premise of the game is you are literally f- going through hell to get your wife back. And I remember yeah. being impressed by the visuals of that game. Oh, it's, it was, it's it, a though. fun, it's a hack and slash, you know, yeah. it, as boring gameplay could be, you get new stuff, avatar shit happens, but yeah. um, it's fun, but it's the idea of like going through hell to literally get your wife back. It was like, I was like, this, this love. Well, <laughs> not, not Last of Us, but another Naughty Dog game, Uncharted. Mm. Nathan uh, Drake. Nathan Drake. And Elena. And Elena. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic We must be in sync today. Yes. Like, or, yeah. Do you want to know? Uh, that was, that's all I was, I was going <laughs> to say. Mine is Josh and Ali. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's too far away. I would hold his hand. Uh, someone it's, will uh, draw some fanfic about that. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> We've entered that part beard of Beard to beard and brace. Ship them, oh, folks. Ship them. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, might have to tell my wife, so... Uh, but yeah, I mean, she always anyway. she always like rescues him, yeah, in a weird way, and that was kind of always fascinating, yeah. You know, in the fourth one especially, it was really cool to like see them, like kind of work out their problems and stuff while they're yeah. while you're like trying to climb up mud hills and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm gonna jump back to movies real quick. Yeah, I kind of wanna because I know we're kind of approaching that hour hour point. I want to talk. Maybe this can open the floor up. Maybe it isn't an anti love story. It it isn't. It isn't. Maybe it's a story that talks about love. There we go. Uh, High Fidelity. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's one of, again, one of my top ten favorite movies of all time. It's so uh, good. John Cusack. My f- Anything with John Cusack. I would good. definitely say my top three favorite fourth wall break movies uh, of mm-hmm. all time. Yeah. Um, but I can't tell if it is a love story or if it isn't. Because he's going through, it's more about self-discovery. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's, I mean, he learn a lot years after later, a breakup spoilers, and he's kind of... Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they break up and she's sleeping with someone else and he sleeps with another girl. And like, he's revisiting all his past loves, uh, cause he was talking about his, what is it? Top five breakups of all time. Yeah. Yep. Um, but he's then they kind of get together of records and they kind of get together back at the end of a funeral, but it's kind of messy and it ends really well. I mean, they're in love by the end of it, 
Um, but it's messy, and maybe it is a, a very real love story because love is kind of messy and like love is very messy. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I that definitely holds a very special place in my heart when it comes to romance movies, um, and also like early Jack Black killing the game in that movie. Oh yeah, mm. like killing it yeah. in that movie. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen that. I, it's one of my favorites. I saw it like a I long time it. ago when it first came out. I didn't understand shit because I was a kid. We should rewatch it. It's yeah. It's I started watching it on Netflix actually. So okay. I was like, oh, I remember this because I started. Go, I went on a huge John Cusack binge because I started. Because he's great. Serendipity. I started watching uh, Gross Point Blank. Martian and kid. then uh, <laughs> Must Love Dogs. And yeah. I was like, Let me watch all this John Cusack. Did you say, say anything? 2012. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I, I was. I was. It was. I'm gonna put that on the list. Say was, anything. No. Yeah. Holding the boombox up. Yeah. Uh! Classic. Tom, did you watch 2012? <laughs> Yeah, that's a romance between him and the earth um i think if we're, if we're talking about breakup. movies and and this is kind of like a sub i guess section for me in movies is like movies that talk about love and they're not like really like these triumphant romances but like that was my favorite thing about 500 days of summer in the yeah. beginning it was like this is not a love story it's a story about love mm -hmm. and sad enough main character's fucking name is tom Goes through all this shit. And I was like, oh, why does my life suck? Anyways, but um, I don't know. I just really liked how that movie was pretty much like it's entire, like a good portion of the movie is about this girl and really kind of like to course it's about him because he's. They're both terrible people. They're both terrible people. But the thing is like, sh she's not really at fault either. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. She's That's not really point. at fault. He's yeah. kind of at fault. She's kind of at fault. He's kind of not at fault. And it's like, he, they're both having to adjust what their ideologies of what love is. And again, it's that conversation piece about how love grows and you change and love changes you and you change how you feel how love is. And at the very end, he's still hopeful to go into the same dumb bullshit as he did before. Mm -hmm. Obviously learned the new experiences and the lessons. Right, because it's a different season. A different season, because it's autumn. <laughs> Minka Kelly is a babe, but I love her. I didn't <laughs> like that line. What? What's your name? Autumn. Autumn. He looks at the camera. Yeah, I know. I could have done without that. Um, Can I... Can I do you have like a violent change of conversation? Jesus. Yeah. Do it. Did you just preface it with violent? <laughs> well, Aggressive. you'll understand. Okay. I mean like a change of conversation. Anyway. Um I'm not I, I've gone through a change as I've been from when I was a kid to a teenager to an adult and what I think about movies or not movies but romance and so to speak and I guess the thing that I would say is that I'm not a big fan of what how the media portrays romance. Like, I think you and I have talked about this, Tom. Um, Shout out to Tom. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. <laughs> um, there's this, this, I, th there's lack of a better term, codependence. Do you guys familiar with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where it's you mean like, just as an idea? Just as an idea, yeah, yeah. but in, in terms of relationships, it's like, I've never really been about those relationship movies or those romantic comedies or whatever when they're like, I need that, you. That I need you. I can you, I, you complete, complete me. me or like I, I'm nothing without I you. Like, die with I'm you. not wearing hockey pants. <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> oh, so All close. those kind of lines. Uh, I'm lost without you. So yeah. you're saying you don't like Jeremy Maguire? Yeah. No, no, no. I think it, it's just the ideology, I guess, <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. what I would say is, like, I, what I was going to bring up is how it's changed. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like love stories 10, 20 years ago are different than what love stories are now in the way that they're told, maybe. Can I jump on that? Yeah. And so, I mean, the codepend codependency thing, and I, the sad thing is, like, I'm, I feel like it's we're still seeing backlash of it. We're still yeah. seeing remnants, of symptoms, victims of it who have been sold this belief that you know, you plus me equals one instead of you plus me equals 10, equals 50, equals 100. Like, right. in order to be a, a, an actual unit of a person, I need to have another person with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where You're I feel like... complete without them. Yeah, life would... Con like, qu quoting a love movie, Hitch, life will just continue and we'll all be just fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but having someone in your life is a route in your journey, whatever, and it's all better <laughs> with them. Yeah. And you're stronger and better with it, but not you're not incomplete. It doesn't make you less than right. you were before. Um, and I attribute that a lot to actually, to me, what I found, what I think I was Shout sold on you. it for a long time Again. was old Disney movies. Yeah, Because it was always yeah. a prince having to, like, save the princess. Yeah, it was that fairy tale thing. It was, thing, like, always yeah. having, like, they always had to fall in love at the end. And to me, I think the big change and the reason why I have such more respect for Disney now is movies like Brave, Frozen, 
uh, the newer ones where the love is through sister, through mother, through... Yeah. So yeah. the characters have to find love within themselves and their own family first, and that means more than the love of, like, another person outside of that yeah. initial tribe. Tangled. Well, yeah. I, I liked what you brought up with High Fidelity of, like, how him talking about, you know, love is... It's messy sometimes. Mm-hmm. I, I appreciate movies that are a little bit more real, mm-hmm. that are yeah. a little bit like, you know... Yep. It's Beginners is a perfect example yeah, of that. I'm not spoiling anything because I think everyone listening should go watch that movie. But yeah. it's not... It, there's, it, life doesn't wrap everything up with a bow all the yeah. time. And, and it's nice to see that tackled as well in the, I mean it's obviously movies are great to escape and imagine there are perfect worlds where everyone is is perfect for each other and they find their soulmates and stuff like that but it is nice to see a story that you can relate to and kind of process how you're feeling and be like oh that's it because there's been plenty of movies where the ending's not great like something that helped me through something I didn't know was bothering me for a long time was a movie called Blue Valentine mm. um, and that's a messy movie but at the end God. of it, I I learned something about myself out of it, and so I I'm, I I hope Hollywood doesn't. It's try not just a movie things. you just eat and munch on, and it's like junk food where you could just be enjoying. No, it it, it, it challenges your emotional integ- you uh, engage intelligence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Intellectually, you yeah. have to think about it. You question your own, yeah, yeah. You question your own ideologies of it. And I mean, for me, in terms of like movies that have discussions about it, I I don't know. I, you guys are pretty big movie buffs with me, but. Uh, the conversation between Spike Jones and his wa- ex-wife. Mm-mm. So Lost in Translation was created was yes. was one film, and then Spike Jones made her as a film dialogue. They're made they're made in tandem with each other. Like oh, serious? his ex-wife made Lost in Translation, and then he made her, and he made that as a reply to Lost in Translation. Well, now I gotta go watch. Back so we watch those together. You oh, will my see heart a di- just... you'll see a di- <laughs> you see the dialogue what they go through. And the cool thing is that they're connected by Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And so I think really what Scarlett Johansson's character in Lost in Translation is very much like this naive girl who's like following her lover around and has to learn how to find a new type of love with Bill Murray. And you don't really know if it's going to be one of those like romantic kind of loves, or it's like one of those I have these loving feelings for somebody because they've been such a big significant part of my life, which was otherwise lonely, and. At the very end, they share a secret, which, you know, we're not allowed to hear. But yeah. you know that it meant something between the two characters. And then in her, on the opposite end, where you have Joaquin Phoenix, a character who's just as naive in terms of love and not knowing anything. And it's the Scott Johansson character who's, like, kind of opening his eyes yeah. of a different type of love, of new love. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, love from everyone and everything and having experiences yeah. that you never had. Yeah. And so it, it doesn't have to be a binary kind of thing, too. No. But then, I mean, if it does follow the whole trope of let's find the perfect match, you do get great films, such mm-hmm. as, like, uh, one that just came to mind is Moonrise Kingdom. Mm-hmm. You're talking about people who found each other their perfect match at a young age, and that is a phenomenal film. So yeah. you're just finding that balance, finding what makes you happy to watch, I guess, is what yeah. we're really talking about today. Well, I think it's also, I, I think society has changed a lot as as uh civil rights issues are being talked about mm-hmm. a lot more and uh human rights and you know being free to love who you want to love or being free to care about yourself and you know stuff like that where it's like oh you're not selfish for loving yourself it's yeah. not a bad thing to love yourself it just means that you care about yourself and in relationships, that's where people, it's kind of the old joke where it's like where people get lost in relationships. It's yeah. true. And sometimes you see that in movies and you're like, ah, oh, man, it could have gone a different way. <laughs> yeah. It could have gone a much different way. Well, but- I, I think to that point, like we're we're kind of growing as media is growing too. And the way media was really following it's like just this older, archaic, very primal sense of like, Love is something you attain. So love is something you grab and you get and you go through, you know, the bullshit and you fight the dragon, you get the girl or you get the guy, whatever. Yeah. It's something you get. It's something you you have as an object. It's a piece. It's a trophy. Um, whereas, like, newer films, newer media, they're trying to challenge that where it's much more sophisticated. And, like, we're trying to fight the reptilian, like, ancestral, like, the needs and desires that we have. There's a lot of theory about like the phallus and how it's all in film and stuff like that. And that there's always this like kind of reminder that we are not more than these animals that we were like mm. hundreds of years ago. But now we're having films where they're talking about like interracial relationships. Uh, the Joel Edgerton film Loving mm-hmm. and how that yeah. was like a big centerpiece of that film. 
um, Call Me By Your Name is out, where, yeah. you know, it, it, now we can, now we're in a place where we're having films about people coming out and then finding love and how that struggle is coming coming to be, or yeah. unrequited love. It's or, a new story. Yeah, well, yeah. I, like it, I like to be used, like love is being used to kind of explore characters more mm -hmm. throughout yeah. the movie instead of it being like the center topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, an example for me is actually Blade Rider 2049 mm. oh, between nice. Kay and Joy. Like, I feel like you just learn more about mm -hmm. Kay and how and what it means to be a, you know, replicant yeah. and all that stuff um, and how he interacts and has like a genuine like love story. Like one of the best love stories in like 2017 cinema. Yeah. That was really between, hurt your heart too. Yeah. yeah. Was between an AI and. I won't, I won't spoil anything either, but for this film, uh, my favorite love story of 2017 where. Again, it's not, it's not, it is part of the centerpiece, but it's also there to explain what it's like to be different in our society is mm -hmm. Shape of Water. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. That would, that'd probably be my vote. If, I, again, I won't spoil anything about it, but I think they used, Guillermo used love in a really brilliant way to show uh, not only the strengths of people who, who are uh, quote unquote different, but also the shortcomings of our, uh, of humanity as a whole um, around. Still, so to see that. Yeah, you. I, oh, it's beautiful. It's great. So, um, I'll, that's all I'll say about that. But I, I, I nice. just trying to support your. Point. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also not trying to spoil anything, but kind of with those two things, what I love about how they use love in those cir cir circumstances, especially in sci-fi, is that around those other pieces where there's justice, corruption, government, all this other crap, all those are all shown as imperfections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's shown as pure mm -hmm. is, was love. Love was love. So. All well, the love today. I just I, I I like love being a. It's just a part of the story. Mm -hmm. You learn a lot. Like if we're gonna go outside the entertainment business, you learn a lot in a relationship. Yeah. I mean, if it's the right kind of relationship, even in bad ones, you learn a lot about yourself and what Joker and Harley. I would say you learn the same in bad ones as you do in good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you learn I, so you can have good ones. <laughs> oh. You said um, you'd like to hear some examples of classics. Yeah. We well, have... Casablanca is one of my yeah, favorites right now. I was going to say Casablanca Gone and with the Gone with the Wind. The only reason we're not mentioning those ones are because that they are the pillars of, yeah. of love. Um, so sorry to anyone who, who those are your favorites and we didn't mention those. <laughs> we understand it. We're just trying to kind of go off the well, path a little bit. Here, I mean, as we're coming to the end of this episode, there's a lot. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. We could go on for... Literally 24 hours and still have more romance to talk about. Because we have so many mediums to talk about. We could probably find some more in video into games. comic books, like Colossus and Kitty oh. Pride. Yeah. There's a lot. We didn't, I mean, we didn't actually go into, like, actual literature. Or Scott Summers too. and Jean Grey, or Logan and Jean mm. Grey. <laughs> 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 or that other guy in Jean Grey. Yeah. Forrest Gump and Professor Jenna. X and Jean Grey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so sorry, there's continue, a lot. continue, yeah. There's yeah. a lot. Yeah. And we could not cover it all. So, but what about everybody at home? Do you have a favorite romance? Do yeah, you? tell us. Do you? Do you have a favorite Did romance? Did you have a classic one you wanted to name real quick? No, you you took him. Was, that, was that it? You stole that, was that, it really that thunder from me. Was it really with the wind? Yep. Oh, wow. No. So, it's cool. I'm you a genuinely, jack. You, you genuinely sounded like you couldn't think of anything when we were first thinking about it. So I was like, yes, I'm coming to the conversation with something <laughs> real to say. <laughs> and and then then move, I'm so sorry. What a dick You're move. so pretentious. No, just <laughs> <laughs> How pretentious and hypocritical of you. Donatello in April? Yes. Oh, man. Oh, yes. Corey, you fucked up. You didn't even say that one. It's your favorite turtle. It is my favorite turtle. He's the best turtle. Get out. Oh, man. 100%. That's because it was a one-sided romance. But no, or, we'd love to Casey hear Casey Johnson April in TNT no, one. No, no, <laughs> we we would love Donatello. to hear more what everyone else at home is uh, thinking about, and I mean, we would want to talk about more about comic books or like literature, other things like that. Or yeah, more... talk with us on social media. Yeah. We're more we than love happy it. to to discuss. Slide more. in my DMs. I probably won't have anyone slide in my DMs. <laughs> I'll slide in your DMs. <laughs> I'll slide in your DMs. That's Thank real you. love. That's real love. That's um, true love. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, everybody at home, for listening. If, you, um, if you're new to the show, um, you can catch us on our website, mm -hmm. uh, nerdonthepodcast.com. All of the following information, our social media for the show, individual hosts. Past episodes. Past episodes. Uh, it's all there. Merch. Yeah, merchandise. Um, something that we find very important to the show is our Patreon. It... Um, 
It's been doing really well. It mm. allows us to do this. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so it first allows... off, thank you for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to those who've already contributed. Exa mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, a dollar so helps. generous. We have a few patrons that do a dollar, and that's it's, that's perfect. So awesome. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, but yeah, check out our website, nerdonthepodcast.com. Um, if you're looking for other podcasts to listen to, um, our friends over at Film Forecast, um, yep. we're probably going to have them on the show at some point, yeah. mm -hmm. and vice versa, be on their show. But uh, check yeah, them check them out, Twitter, Instagram, uh -huh. all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, are we good? Do we feel, do we feel so, complete? I, mean, feel warm? I could always talk about love, Josh. So. Yeah. Yeah. We, we didn't even, we didn't even talk about music. I was going to say. We didn't talk about Jesus. music. That, I feel like that's a whole other episode, to yeah. be honest. Because yeah, this is about fictional romances. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. No, you're right. We'll, we'll do another that's episode true. about music. music is real. And Romeo and Juliet. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, thank you, everybody. As always, Nerd, Nerd on. on. Broadcast.